I thought it was a clever idea. Turned out it wasn't. I honestly don't know why I didn't think of this earlier in this whole process. I guess better late than never. Now I'm really running out of options. I feel like I've tested everything that comes to my mind, everything that could be the culprit. But I can't find it. Yesterday, I toasted my battery. The positive terminal is half melted away. Oops. But the battery is still okay. I finally installed this correctly, so it works. The on-off switch works. This thing does not draw any amps and I can switch it back on finally without toasting anything. So it works. Let's put the keys in. Radio works. So but still it's drawing 0.87 amps. But at least we're back to normal. I repositioned my magnetic relay for the on-off switch. Battery still works. And the reason why all of this happened was because yesterday I thought I wanna do that and do this before I would finally take a break. And in the end, I didn't take a break and yeah, this is the outcome. So I had to order a new quick release battery terminal connector because this is melted away. Ordered a bunch of things like silicone uh, caps for all the connections, but at least it works. The car works, the battery isn't dead. I should have taken a break because even the wire from the magnetic relay to my starter the routing, I don't know what I thought there yesterday, but it wasn't my best job I did. A huge lesson learned, I would say. Down here is my magnetic relay. This is the thick wire running to the starter. This wire comes from the battery and I routed this wire under the engine um, to the starter it's in front of my driver's side header because I thought it was a clever idea. Turned out it wasn't. So I rerouted this wire back here all the way to the firewall and then into the starter behind the heat shield. Here is finally a bit more room to work on the antenna and close this obviously self-made hole here. And I think I wanna pull the antenna out because I won't use it in the near future or ever, who knows. After getting a clear head, I now know what happened. 
up here. So I bolted this wire onto the starter and after that I had to bolt the starter up. So when the starter was done, this wire was free and didn't touch anything and I forgot to check that and the starter is bolted on fully. So the wire was touching the dipstick tube and made a huge short. So now I gotta open that up again, that wire, and see how bad it is or if I can still use it and fix this. I'm constantly thinking about what else could draw this much voltage or amps from a battery while the car just sits here. And I kept thinking that maybe my magnetic relay is drawing voltage when it is switched on. Because the coil obviously needs voltage to keep the contacts closed. So I thought that this could be the reason. While I was welding with my battery two days earlier, and almost burned the cables to the starter down in here. I thought maybe I want to try this out. And I did. And this is what my multimeter says. So the positive side, 10 amp side, goes straight to my starter cable, um, which is the switched side on my magnetic relay. And this side goes to the positive terminal on my battery. And now, let's see. Point 0.3 amps. I always hit a reading of almost about 0.9 amps. And I kept testing and testing and couldn't find the cause. Now I know that the larger part of this reading was caused by my main switch. This is honestly quite a relief, but I still gotta figure out where those 0.3 amps go and why my generator light on the dash is not showing up. So this issue still isn't resolved fully, but I'm really happy that I thought of this. I honestly don't know why I didn't think of this earlier in this whole process. But I guess better late than never. And at least I made a huge short. I burned one pole of my battery down, almost burned a hole in my dipstick tube. But the last time I was checking some of the wires, I had a reading that the wire that feeds my AGI distributor and has a connection to the ground. It should not be, but maybe it was just my mistake. That was the point when I had disconnected the starter. Maybe the wires were touching the engine, the headers, who knows what. So when I pull the feed wire to the AGI distributor, and measure that once more. There was a little latch on it and I try to be very careful because they tend to break easy. Here we go. Now let's see what we can measure here. So I'm gonna switch here to this connection testing mode. This one, which makes a fun noise. Plug this side here in. I guess this wire shouldn't have a connection to the ground. But obviously it does. So with this wire off, I wanna retest my Parasitic Pro. Maybe this resolves my 0.3 amps. Who knows? 10 amps. 0.3 still. Alright. Hmm. I 
and when I pull out this block here, it should drop to zero. If I'm not mistaken. Zero. So something here keeps drawing it. I plug this in, I'm about point three. This is this two blade connector plugged in. Two blade connector out, point zero one amps, two blade connector in, point thirty amps. So maybe that's the cause why my generator light isn't showing up. And maybe generator light not showing up and this parasitic draw are connected. Who knows? I'm gonna disconnect the cables here one more time. I guess I'll never see that again. Is this wire here? This wire feeds the J bolt. Okay, another short. Let's get this back on and tinker around on the chain block. this on and try out all the other wires which means I am getting them off so this wire here gotta trace that down what do the others do? And there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. This here, there's nothing as well. Nothing as well, so it's this wire here. So I'm gonna bolt everything back down except for this brown wire here. And once again, I need to consult my service manual just to secure the other wires. I put this not back on loosely. This wire goes to it's this one here. It goes. I think that is one to the starter. I still got a ground. It's this wire here. In here, there has to be this tan colored wire. If I am not mistaken, yeah, I can feel it coming down. So there is this one tan colored wire going to the star, which causes to draw the amps. I want to see if the generator light comes up, if this is not connected to the chain block here. So I'm going to put this down real quick. Now let's test this again. 
I tested it real quick. What happens if I don't connect this tan cable here and nothing happens because the lights in the car won't turn on, the car itself does nothing. So this is a pretty important connection right here. So I gotta track that down because this is causing my amp draw. Gotta sit down with my service manual once again. I think it's quite funny that the first thing I did when I was hunting the parasitic draw was installing these quick release battery terminal connectors. And now here we are again. So once again, I'm putting this connector back on. So let's get this battery back in. Right now, I want to study my wiring diagram where this tan colored wire runs from and to, or at least to, because it starts right at the chip lock. And I think it runs down to the starter motor, but I don't know what it's connected to down there. So I'm gonna trace that wire now. Since my starter may be faulty, I thought why not steal the new one. I ordered this from Rock Auto 2 as many parts for my cars and this is a new unit so let's steal this and try it again on my Caddy Seville. So first let's take off the heat shield here. thing is done. Now I want to get off these cables here. And now I want to get off this side first with the ground strap and then unbolt. Oh I gotta first I gotta pull off this torque converter cover. I'm not gonna pull out all four bolts. Just three kind of bend it away. So that should be enough just to get the starter out. So this one is out. I'm putting it back in just a tiny bit. And now let's get off the other side. All right, this bolt is out. And now, Let's get the starter out. And this is a heavy piece, so you gotta be careful. And here we are. Let's put one bolt back in, just to hold the cover in place, like that. And this is the new starter. We have a bit of surface rust here on the mating surface to the engine. But other than that, this is also, just like my generator, a remanufactured unit. This one should work fine on my engine. Yeah, so let's try it and see if it's really my old starter, the original one. I think it's the one from here that goes to the junction block is a brown wire here and in my case it's a tan colored wire which I guess causes a parasitic drain because maybe this coil thing here doesn't work correctly. So let's steal this unit here. So let's see if this star changes anything, hopefully. But first I gotta 
Loosen this cover once again. Loosen the starter. And I'm thinking of just getting the wires up to here, but I think they won't reach here. Which means I gotta take out the starter. And to get this one out, I gotta unbolt these three bolts from my long tube headers. I even got to loosen the five bolts on the engine. Let's dig into it. All right, <clears throat> so now the wires are off and I really think that I put all these wires up into the engine bay, connect the star there, try to ground it properly and see if the parasitic draw still exists or if it really was this old grimy starter in here. So let's pull up all these wires once again. Just for a better grounding, I'm gonna connect it to one bolt here on the body. And right now, we should have a reading of about 0.5 amps, which is just my magnetic relay for the main switch. So I'm gonna connect one side to the ground and to the negative post on the battery. Okay, still 0.9. Let's connect this one right here. fuse again. This time I was smart enough to order a bunch of fuses. I switched out this one. Let's see if I really blew it. Yep, just to be sure. I want to test a new one here. Yeah, I blew a second fuse. Great. So I have only two chances left. Let's see if I can get a good connection down there. Right now the main switch is off, so I should have zero here, which I do. So I'm pushing the door jump button right now. 0.90. All right, we know that it isn't the starter, which means it has to be a wire grounding out or something. If it really isn't the starter, I'm really glad that I didn't start to unbolt my headers on the driver's side. So this wire right here is a positive wire and shouldn't have a connection to the ground. But it does. This one has no connection. So something with this wire here doesn't add up. Let's get this. Do I want to get this back down now? I want to make a new one. 
get this stiff wire out finally. So we just put it aside and now I really wanna wanna get this done for good. First we get this air cleaner here out to get good access to here or a better access at least. Alright, so this is the purple wire. And this doesn't ground out. Just wanna recheck that real quick. Zero. Absolute zero. So let's unplug this here real quick. So this one is out. This is the feed for my AGI distributor. Which grounds out as well. So right now I really wanna get this problem solved for good. I gotta get this bolt on the chain lock here out once again. Let's get this on so that the other wires stay on here. This goes to my distributor. Most of these wires in here come from my main connector. I really thought it was my starter, but maybe it's really just a wire that grounds out. So I really hope it is, because I can't think of something else anymore. And what I'm doing right here is getting all these wires out so that I can pull this wiring harness out and look for all the cables inside this wiring loom. Here is the oil pressure feed and the water temperature feed. one wire where does this go yeah this is the cable to my downshift solenoid on my transmission so I gotta unplug that but there is nothing much to it uh, it's just one plug up here so this is the plug let's get this one out straight up into this wiring room you see maybe I can get this off here all right except for one wire which is, where is it? Here. Except for this brown wire from my starter, which runs up to this junction block, every other wire runs to the bulkhead connector, connecting to the fuse block. Let's open this wiring loom here and see This wire is faulty. Previous owner really 
wanted to make a mess in here. But there is no visible damage to this wire here. Except for up here a little maybe. These are, as you can see um, in the wiring diagram, the suitable links green to yellow, from I think purple to black, from black to red, and here is the brown one. These two are water temperature and oil pressure. And they only get a connection. So maybe it's my oil pressure sender. There is nothing on the water temperature and oil pressure is constantly grounding out. Except for another butchering in here. Why did he do this? I'm wrapping that in electrical tape because this isn't even a, a clean solution here, what he did. So I really don't know where else in the car he put his fingers and butchered around on the wiring. This is really a mess here. At least I know that in here looks everything okay. And the fun part is to get all these few buildings back in here, as well as my cable for the amp, this blue one. back on. Now this one here. Just like that. I'm gonna put electrical tape around the end here so it stays closed just like that. Alright, one in between like it was. Maybe this was just from three years on or two. Who knows? All right, I forgot one wire. Perfect. Well, let's use this one from that wiring loom down there because this is a bit harder to reach. Like that. Put those wires back in here. I'm gonna put the wires back where they came from, connect everything and see if the oil pressure switch does something that's causing my problems here. So I just made this wire for my starter motor. This is the side on the magnetic relay. And this is the one that goes on the starter. So let's put this in and mount the starter again. I rewired everything now. The motor, the starter motor is back on. I wired this here with this new and flexible wire. This wire here is the new one, right to the starter. Here are some cable boots on there to not make any shorts. I put one on the starter motor too, so nothing grounds out there. 
and yeah everything's back to normal and now let's see if that changed something 0.89 if I switch off the oil pressure nothing changes water temperature still no change here this is weird because I thought that maybe the oil pressure switch grounds out because all the other wires looked okay in the wiring loom. No wire did ground out there. So every wire in those wiring looms looked okay. It was just this one connection the previous owner butchered together again. But other than that, I couldn't find any visible culprits. I measured all the wires, nothing grounds out there. Um, yeah. So now I'm really running out of options. Because the only thing I thought could be the culprit after cancelling out all the other possible causes. I thought it was the starter motor. Switched it out to the new one. Wired that. Didn't change a thing. So then I thought maybe it is the brown wire to the starter motor. Pulled all the wires out of the wiring looms. They looked okay. And only the sensors ground out. No, just the... Uh, the oil pressure switch grounds out, but I think that's okay. I hope at least, because oil pressure, the light for oil pressure on the dash shows up. Uh, but now I really don't know what could cause this draw. And remember, it's just 0.3 amps because 0.5 amps I needed for my magnetic relay. So one more time I want to try some of the connectors. Like the one for, I think it's the engine temperature, metal temperature. Doesn't change a thing. Here to the bed terminal of the ATI distributor. Doesn't change a thing to the wiring harness on the engine. Doesn't change a thing. What does this do? Nothing. Hmm. I really don't know what's causing my troubles here. There is one. Okay, that is weird. Look at that. This one was just lying here like that. This broke off. So I was running on seven cylinders for a long time, I guess. It sits tightly on there, but it was definitely off. Else looks okay in here. I think I gotta take a break and rethink this. Maybe it has something to do with my AC compressor. I think I wanna rewire that and see if that changes the thing. I didn't really think that that would solve the problem, but I tested it anyways. 
I plugged the AC compressor back in um, to every connection there is just to see if that eventually caused my channel light not to come on the dashboard. Yeah, didn't help. Now I know that and I can leave this compressor out so the channel light still doesn't come on. And I still have this parasitic drain of 0.3 amps which I can't resolve. I feel like I've tested everything that comes to my mind, everything that could be the culprit. But I can't find it. I even tested this remanufactured starter and wanted to know if that is okay when I hit the S terminal here which is the purple wire or the brown one that's the purple one and this grounds out when the car is not started so I guess this is okay and the other connection where the thick battery cable runs to doesn't ground out but still I can't figure out what's causing the voltage, the drain, the battery drain. Hmm. I also tested the ground strap. How good the connection is, it is a perfect connection. Even though it may not look like a perfect wire or a ground strap, I really don't know what's causing it. If you have any hints or tips, please let me know in the comments down below because I tested everything I thought could be the cause and everything I tested and checked didn't change a thing. But at least if I turn the main switch off, nothing drains the battery. Unplug the AC compressor again. <sighs> I want to do this one more time here. Disconnect everything from the J block. This is just connecting the one wire to the starter. It's only this cable. And I don't get it why. I have to give up for now. I really don't like to give up. I'm gonna ask around for what could be the cause. I'm sorry guys. This is it for now.